What can you say about 2020? Our whole family's never missed a Christmas Eve, ever. So this is gonna be really weird. It's the most uncertain of times, the most challenging of years. You've heard those lines over and over. And it's not worth risking to have one more Christmas together. As COVID cases rise again, it could feel like 2020's problems won't stop. But could this time of year change that? To be empowered to do something about it has been incredible for me. This week, we look at what the giving spirit of the holidays could mean for so many people struggling through what this year has taken away. This is The Race. Welcome to The Race, I'm Chris Stewart. This pandemic has impacted all of us in different ways, depending on where we live and how we live. That's especially true here in Arizona, not far from where we are right now on the Navajo Nation. And that's why a group of people is hoping that the spirit of giving that comes with the holiday season will allow them to continue to bring relief to some of the Americans hit hardest by COVID-19. It's a sprawling part of the country. The unemployment rate is like 50 to 60 percent. Where Americans face challenges. A third of our communities don't have electricity. Challenges many may find hard to believe exist in the United States. I was born and raised on the, the Navajo Nation. Ethel Branch lived those challenges firsthand. I grew up on a ranch. We didn't have running water or electricity. The Navajo Nation is the largest Native American reservation in the United States, land roughly the size of West Virginia that reaches into Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah. Coronavirus has hit as hard here as anywhere in the country. The magnitude of need uh, in our communities is significant. A need that Ethel's been trying to meet since March with what started with this GoFundMe page. Early on, we, we were thinking really small, you know, like, let's help five families <laughs> for two weeks. But the Navajo and Hopi Families COVID-19 Relief Fund grew to so much more. I would say we've raised about seven and a half million at this point. The money pays for PPE, cleaning supplies, boxes of food that can feed a family of four for two weeks, and materials to keep people informed on the virus, plus water in a place where it can be a luxury, especially right now. A third of our communities at Navajo and Hopi don't have running water. So asking people to wash their hands frequently is um, asking them to make a decision between, you know, drinking water and water to feed their animals and water to wash their hands with. Ethel says they've helped 48,000 Navajo and Hopi households so far, but at a cost of around $250,000 a week, the millions they've raised is not enough. We have enough to get to the end of December. They hope to raise another $6 million to keep their operation going through the end of the pandemic, as numbers on the reservation rise in both cases and deaths. What do you think the numbers would be if, if you hadn't been there? Oof. I, I definitely think that um, they would have been a lot worse. While challenges are nothing new to Navajo and Hopi people, Neither is a spirit of fighting beyond them. Ethel went from growing up on that ranch without water and electricity to graduating from Harvard and becoming the Navajo Nation's Attorney General. Now, as this pandemic poses a new challenge, she's fighting to make sure her community makes it through. I think in every community where we've served, we've, we've made a difference in, in, in saving lives and, and protecting families because there is so much um, I hate to say it, but there's so much loss, there's so much death in our community. It, it, at times it's been, you know, overwhelming. And, and I do think it would have been worse if there weren't this effort um, and other efforts to enable people to stay home and stay safe. Apart, but together, 
Many families are skipping the traditional gatherings this holiday season, instead spending time together on video calls. Alexa Liako spoke to a healthcare worker who made the tough decision to keep their family safe by staying home. Nine months into the pandemic, trauma nurse Allison Berner hoped the holidays would bring her a break from the loss she and her colleagues have witnessed all year. Most of us are pretty exhausted. Um, we went through wave one and then kind of had, you know, our head above water and now it feels like uh, our head is below water again. That feeling is now heavier than ever as COVID-19 cases seem to be endlessly climbing across the country. The fear of going anywhere other than the hospital in my house is terrifying to me because I'm living it every day and I'm seeing what this virus is doing to people and it's horrible. Berner says that's why for the first time in her life, she's not seeing her family for the holidays. It's just something that I'm willing to sacrifice to keep all my loved ones safe. She first felt the devastating weight of isolation at Thanksgiving. I'm from a big family and we, none of us saw each other. We had a Zoom meeting and um, it was hard. Now with Christmas on the way, Berner has made the tough choice to once again stay away from those she loves, especially because her job puts her at a higher risk of bringing COVID-19 to her family. Our whole family's never missed a Christmas Eve ever. So this is gonna be really, really weird. <laughs> Berner has dozens of family members all across Colorado and Christmas is the one time where everyone gathers. It's like a huge family tradition for all of us. Um, and we're not doing that hardest thing and the worst thing that I'll miss is just surrounded by the love of my family, especially after a year like this year. Berner says her sadness goes beyond her own loss. The fact that my kids are going to miss that for like the first year that they really can understand Santa and Christmas is heartbreaking. I mean, it's really just, um, it's hard. But she knows the loneliness she feels this year is far less than the pain of losing a loved one, a moment she's been part of for too many families in her community. When we have to call a family and tell them that their loved one has died and they can't come see them because of COVID, it's the worst phone call. I will never forget their faces and their reaction. It's something that's burned into my brain and will never leave. On top of those moments of profound pain, Allison has seen the hurt COVID-19 can bring even for those who aren't infected, in part because she's felt the heartache herself. We've seen a huge increase in patients with depression and, you know, they're very, very isolated, job loss. This, this pandemic is not just about sickness. It's about a whole entire life changing event. A life changing event hitting frontline workers harder than ever and an event Allison hopes we can all learn from. It's not worth risking to have one more Christmas together. It's you want many Christmases to come. I'd much rather spend Christmas with my family next year than not have some of my family members here because of this virus. But until then, she can only hope the Zoom meeting this Christmas will be the last holiday she spends holding her screen tight. For The Race, I'm Alexa Liako. We wanted to know if hotels were preparing for a rush of holiday travelers who may opt to stay in a hotel instead of with family, but we found that hotels are actually bracing for the opposite. Holiday travel is expected to be down this year. About a quarter of Americans say they are likely to travel, but almost three quarters of people say they're less likely to travel because of the pandemic. The American Hotel and Lodging Association says it adds to the challenges that hotels face during the pandemic. This is just the latest gut punch for the hotel industry. One of the hardest hit by this pandemic, 70% of hotels told the AHLA they'll be out of business in six months without new government relief. And 74% said they would be forced into layoffs without that relief. The race continues next. <laughs>